everybody, it's Father David. It's Ordinary Time. We're pondering in this time the ordinary ways of a disciple, how we grow in holiness, how we continue to surrender our hearts to Jesus. Today, while we're actually recording, it's the feast day of the presentation of the Lord, where we remember that like the Lord came back into his holy temple. He presented himself in the temple so that we may once again worship God like rightly through Christ our Lord, right? We still believe this. This is why he, the light of the world, um, is still recognized by that red sanctuary lamp that's there. So today on the day we also call Candlemas, we bless a lot of candles. Uh, we recognize that he is always with us. He's He has not left us orphan. He is with us till the end of the age and the Most Holy Eucharist still dwells within his temple, but also he comes in the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, to come into this temple. He started that journey, that pilgrimage into our hearts in baptism, and then he continues to refan it into flame every time we receive him. We continue in this ordinary time to continue to try to fan the flame of love, to ask the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with the fire of his love through each like individual act of love towards God and toward love towards neighbor, right? That's harkening back towards those last two uh, Sundays, second readings uh, where, where St. Paul was talking about us being one mystical body and as well, like love is the way uh, to will the good of the other, of God in our lives and what he wants to do and of neighbor. So remember, if any anytime you need something like blessed or like, again, you miss the blessing of the candles, you can always bring it by the office. They'll set it on the on a back table. They'll tell the priest, we'll bless it. And when it's all done being blessed, you can, you can have it back. And really cool, I, I love the candle blessing personally. Uh, just listen to this, like, empowered by the seal of the Holy Cross, like, let the spirits of darkness depart in trembling and fear uh, from all the places where this light shines. Never more dare to d disturb those who serve you, the Almighty God, who liveth and reigneth forever and ever. Like, that's an awesome blessing. So, get your candles blessed. Another thing we have happening at the parish is on February 26, which is a Saturday, after the 10 a.m. Mass, come join us in the Padawan Center. If you think you might have a vocation to the priesthood of the religious life, um, if you think you're called um, beyond the natural, beautiful vocation of marriage to, again, give your life entirely to Jesus Christ and to serve his mystical body in the church in one of those particular fashions. So come that day and come begin to discern with us if you think maybe God, if God's poking like at your heart, all right? Also on February 8th, just a little thing out there is the feast day of St. Jerome Emiliani. Just so you know, that's the patron saint of the auxiliary bishop uh, Italo. Um, that is the, the patron of his particular order. So I encourage you, pray for him that day that he may be a holy and a uh, holy bishop. Other than that, February is going to go quick. We're going to approach Lent real quick. Ash Wednesday is March 2nd. So uh, my encouragement is while we're in ordinary time, again, pondering how we're supposed to surrender our hearts to God and be dis his disciples, like start thinking already of Lent. We've all been there, right? Like it's like halfway through Lent or like basically the end and you're thinking, oh, what should I give up for Lent? Okay, start now. Start thinking where is God as you're thinking and praying in the ordinary, what are those ordinary areas that he wants into? Where does he want? So that you can start thinking of where, where are areas that I need to, I can invite God into on a regular basis, creating regular habits, or where's something I need to get out of my life uh, so that, again, Lent may be a glorious time to grow in holiness. One other thing that we have happen in the parish is that we want to care for those persons who have a gluten intolerance. It's a relatively small piece of our community, but still we wanted to make sure we're caring for you. Um, so we have gone ahead and ordered the low gluten hosts and know that we're now going to have a person, an, an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, who will be designated to care for you. So what's gonna happen, similar to like what happens with um, administering the Most Holy Eucharist to the choir, is that on the other side, on the Mary side area, near, like kind of lined up with the pie, uh, is that there will be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, one who will receive on the tongue so they're not touching any host, uh, and so they don't get gluten, because we know some people are very gluten sensitive, and so then they will go administer to the person with the gluten sensitivity, and it will, that will only be for those who have a gluten intolerance, because we have these particular low gluten hosts that are allowed by the church, and so my encouragement is to that portion of the community, is basically you could move during the sign of peace, because there's kind of some motion in the uh, the church right then. They'll encourage you to keep it very reverent. Again, it, it's a, it's a the, that prayer, that rite of peace, um, is about saying like, I want you to have Jesus. Like, I want you to have the Prince of Peace in your life. And so. Um, still keep it very reverent. But that would be a time to move, or of course, like once um, 
uh, the the ministers have begun, the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion have begun moving. One thing I would encourage those who have a, a low gluten intolerance is probably you want to sit on like the Mary side, either in the main body, like of the church, or in that transept, uh, so that you're kind of already on that same side. You don't have to like do some gigantic movement. So know that that extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, who's an acolyte, will be there for a bit to make sure that everyone who has a low gluten tolerance is communicating but do also please help us by, again, coming forward first so that maximum we usually have is like five people so that all of you may be able to be communicated because then do know that he's going to go back into the sanctuary to get the little picks for those who are handicapped so he can minister to them who, who can't come forward. Um, other than that, know that, again, we care for you. We love you. We want to make sure you receive Jesus. And um, yeah, so that's happening. So this has been the Clergy Corner. This is our third episode. Hope you're enjoying it. We're continuing to, again, share with you all the glorious and beautiful things that happen within the life of the church so that you can grow in deeper and deeper relationship with the Lord who loves you. Stay classy. <laughs>